Hey everybody, Chris Crest here. So today we're going to talk about some squirrel getters. So this was a kind of video that a lot of y'all have probably seen folks do videos of these in recent weeks. Uh, this was by started by CW Longshot. So I will link to his channel down below. But anyways, let's get to talking about it. First one here, uh, y'all might have seen maybe a short video clip at some point on this thing, but this used to belong to my dad, and he got it. I don't know when he had that got this thing. I want to say he got it back in the 90s. Um, it's a, it's actually a late 50s Marlin 39A Mountie, and uh, this is a pretty cool 22. Uh, so there you can see the Marlin proof mark right there. Uh, so it is clear and safe. No. Uh, no rounds in the chamber, none in the tube. Um, this thing has definitely been through some <laughs> through some days. Uh, most of it before my dad picked it up. You can see the side screw here. Somebody boogered that up trying to take it apart. Um, you know, and it's got original bluing on it. Um, it's not a collector grade rifle you know, by any stretch of imagination. But uh, going to look at the side of it. It's got it's got like I said some honest wear. Uh, walnut on it. it looks really really good. I think I had to replace the Marlin eye in the stock. Um, I didn't do the best job of it, but at the time I think it it looks fine. They made these for a number of years. Uh, nice little Marlin lever action. Um, I actually think there should be a hood out here on the site, so maybe I'll try to locate one of those at some point. Um, but anyways, after my dad passed away, this is one of the, the rifles that we ended up uh, kind of bringing back here to the house from him. The deal with this rifle here, uh, you can see it's got a really cheap Tasco scope on there. It had an older Tasco that went to crap. This is probably the cheapest scope you'll ever see. I think this thing was like seven dollars at Walmart. Um, but for what its intended purpose is, it's a three to seven by twenty. It works really good. Um, so my mom and dad, uh, they had a Jack Russell Terrier, and that dog. If you said squirrel, that dog. Uh, her name was Sweet Pea. Uh, she would. Uh, She'd find the tree that had the squirrels in there, and um, you know she basically would tree those things, and you know we'd take this thing out and uh, we'd plink a squirrel, and that squirrel would fall out the tree, and she'd run off with it. So <laughs> I don't know how many squirrels this thing's taken over the years, but you know I always think about my dad when I hold on to this thing. This is you know he loved lever actions, he loved some marlin, and um, you know this thing here, uh, like I said, uh, it's got a lot of honest wear on it. You know, my dad, he wasn't a collector per se on firearms. He just liked what he liked. And uh, like I said, had a lot of Marlins, had a lot of lever actions. This is one of the two lever actions that, that I have that belonged to my dad. The other is a, another Marlin uh, 44 Mag 1894 from 1971. So, um, but anyways, um, this is my first of two squirrel getters, if you will. Um, so let me go ahead and pull out the other one. All right. So this guy here is going to look a heck of a lot different than the last one. Um, like I said, uh, something old, something new. Um, this is a 1022 uh, that I had put together many, many, many years ago. Um, so it is clear and safe. No, nothing in the chamber, nothing in the magazine there. Um, so a little bit about this thing, kind of give you a good, good kind of look at it. Uh, I actually picked up a bare bones 1022 in a wood stock many many years ago at a local shop and um, then I went over to Brownell so this is you know one of the very early Brownells build projects I've done this thing's 10 10 plus years old and um, anyways I basically gutted that 1022 for the 
the trigger housing and the uh, uh, the receiver assembly bolts such like that so I proceeded to throw the catalog at it it's got a uh, Hogue stock on here it's got a Vakortson trigger assembly this is adjustable for stop and it's got a very nice flat face on there um, it's got an extended bolt handle and I can't remember who makes that guy I apologize um, it's got a uh, of course a Picatinny rail up top for a scope and then out here on the end so this is a tactical solutions fluted barrel assembly um, I have a uh, kind of a Harris style bipod on there and then out at the end here I have a tactical solutions titanium cascade TI rim fire suppressor this thing here is gosh darn it is just a freaking cool rifle um, shoots really accurate uh, I tend to use the CCI standard loads in there but um, the optic on here, I actually swapped this out. I had a, had a different uh, optic on there. I think it was a two to seven. Might've been a three to nine. But uh, anyways, um, I have this uh, Swamp Fox Kentucky Long, and it's a lot of optic for this thing, but um, you know, I wanted something a little bit more magnification. I kinda, this one didn't have a home, so I went ahead and used it. And uh, it's got a set of uh, EGW Evolution Gunworks uh, rings on here. Um, so both the optic and the rings, pretty much everything you know, that you see here came from Brownell. So um, big shout out to them. They have awesome stuff. So um, but anyways, these are my two squirrel guns. So a little bit on this thing also as far as what it's taken down. It's taken down some squirrels, but a lot of groundhogs. So back when I lived up in Ohio for a time, uh, I took a job at, when I got out of the Navy that took me up north. And uh, we had a groundhog problem in our backyard. So I would sit outside the up in the second floor in the bathroom window and I would snipe those groundhogs in my backyard with this thing. I also have a Savage Bolt Action Action, my daughter's, um, so I don't have it here, but I used to use that as well. But, uh, you know, this thing has had a lot of rounds through it. Um, what I do for a good cleaning, you can kind of see there's some crud and stuff. You know, rimfire is really dirty and whatnot. But this thing just always works. Never a problem with it. Um, like I said, really accurate. And uh, yeah, so. That's my modernized squirrel getter. So uh, definitely if you guys um, have some squirrel getters of your own, you wanna kinda join in on this, uh, throw a response up there. I'm not gonna tag anybody. A ton of people have already done this, but I thought it was a cool idea. I do got some squirrel getters. Also, it uh, gave me a reason to take out my dad's old uh, 39A Mountie and um, you know do a little bit of uh, show and tell with that sucker. Alrighty, so I appreciate y'all taking a look at two of my squirrel getters right here on today's video. Uh, you know, drastically different firearms, but both accomplish essentially the same thing, just a little bit different fashion. Um, if you're looking to, uh, you know, work on something like this or put something together, especially the modern one here, uh, go check out my friends over at Brown I actually purchased all the parts you see on this particular rifle from the folks over at Brown So. Uh, use code BOP10, tell them I sent you. And, um, you know, any questions or comments, please put those down below. And as always, I appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And I will catch you all in the next video. Y'all take it easy.